Hello everybody, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back again today showing you the Spellbinders large die of the month and this time it is for March 2019. I'm just going to go ahead first as I usually do and lay out all of the pieces. You'll see that there are lots of pieces to this die set and this is another interactive die. So you can make an interactive card with it. It's super simple. Even I can do it, which is saying a lot for interactive cards and it comes out really beautifully at the end. You can see here I'm putting down all of these little accoutrement dies. These are to create flowers and I will go over all of the tiny little pieces a little bit later in the video. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to put all of my tiny little dies on my magnet tool just to hold them in one place. And then I'm going to take a piece of cardstock that is four and I'm sorry, five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. And this is going to make an A2 size card base. As I'm creating my interactive elements, I like to refer back to the crease when I'm gluing everything on and together or adhering it all together. So I just like to make sure that I have my card base there with me while I'm creating this interactive element. This is the actual sentiment of the piece. Mine says from me to you, but they also have this one here, which says let love grow. So I'm going to cut that out twice and in order to get it out and not just the sentiment embedded into the cardstock, you'll need to use that extra piece that goes around the sentiment die. I'm going to take this sort of longer piece here and cut as well two pieces of cardstock with it. And you'll see that there are two ends. One end has one score line, which you fold to make a tab. And the other hand has two score lines and you'll fold that twice and it sort of makes a Z-shaped tab. And when you do that, you're going to put them together in opposite ways. So the first one that you have, say you have this Z there on the left, as you can see, it sort of goes in and then out and then back in again. You're going to take the second piece and the side that you've only folded once, and those are the pieces that you're going to adhere together. Basically, you're making a box. It sounds a lot more difficult than it is, trust me. Once you get it all in there and together, it's really self-explanatory, but I'm going to show you as best as I can here. So now that I've got the two pieces, I'm going to, as I said, adhere the opposite ends to each other, and that way they make this square shape. I'm going to speed through this a bit so that you don't have to see me wiggling and fondling around with my uh, glue there, but I'm going to adhere it all together, and then at the end I'll have this really fun little box shape. Now, just to be simple and to make sure I get it on there, I'm going to adhere my sentiment. It's a very thin sentiment uh, sort of die set, so you want to use a very thin or a very fine point glue. Um, mine is clogged again at the moment. I'm really trying here <laughs> to help myself. Uh, so I'm just using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue, and as long as you do it carefully, it should be fine. Because you're going to be able to see this on both sides, you want to make sure that everything is aesthetically pleasing from both sides. So we're going, the reason that we cut out two sentiment pieces is because we're going to put one on one side and then one on the other side to make a nice uniform look. After I get both of those pieces on there, I'm going to take these two small pieces that came out of that half circle, and you'll see there's three tabs coming up there. You're going to fold those all upright, and then we'll score it just to make sure that there's a nice crease there. So again, we'll do it with both sides. They're both going to get folded up, or both sets of three tabs are going to get folded up. And then the center tab and the the center tab should line up to the center of your box that you made with your sentiments on it. So you're going to take those tabs, put a tiny little bit of glue on them, and then adhere them to the inside of that box. Then you're going to go ahead and adhere your entire box together to your card front, or I'm sorry, to the inside of your card. I do this with glue just because I don't wanna be able to see any of the, you know, tape runner or anything. And this is where I'm going to use the crease in this box to line up with the crease of the inside of the card. So I'm just going to do as best as I can, but having the two creases there really helps. And then I can peek in also to the inside of the box to make sure that it's lining up. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure to these uh, basically feet 
is what we made with those half circle dies. And then I'll just go ahead in just a minute and I'm going to close the card and crease it up nicely so that it's, I, I'm sure that it will close correctly and open and that none of the glue will come out and make the card stick together. And then you have this really nice pop-up feature. So now we have to fill our pop-up feature and the way that we can do that is with all of these fun accoutrement dies and you can make a garden and it's really pretty and it's really fun and you can make lots of different kinds of flowers with all of the dies included. And I realized that I accidentally left this die out, but this die cuts out those three stems and each stem is a little bit different just to add a little bit of variety. And it's nice because they're all in one die. So one pass through with some cardstock will allow you to cut out three stems. Here are the different flowers that you can cut out and some of the little embellishment pieces that you can put on there. And here are some extra embellishment pieces. These are sort of like stamens that normally would stick out of a flower. And these little pieces come from the cutouts of that half circle die. So you can also use that to help embellish your flowers and things like that. So I'm going to speed through this a bit and just show you how I create a flower to go inside the garden. Again, we want these things to be aesthetically pleasing from the front and the back because you're going to be able to see them both. So I'm going to make a 3D or like a double sided flower. And to do that, I'm using a few of the accoutrement pieces as well as both flower fronts. I'm going to use one stem and then adhere both flower fronts to either side of that stem. And that way you have a flower that looks good from one way and the other way as well. So from the front and the back. And I'm showing you here, just flipping it over. And that way when you open it, it doesn't matter which way they open it or look at the pop-up feature, they're going to see a really pretty garden. To adhere the flowers, it's really simple. You're just gonna put a tiny little bit of glue or you could use tape if you really wanted to and stick it up inside. I, you'll see in just a minute, I end up using both sides of the box, but you don't have to if you want just a few flowers. I end up sort of stuffing it with flowers because I got really excited. Also, it's good to note that you can use these flowers flat on a card. You can see there in the back a little bit. It's hard because it's a little blurry but you can use them flat on a card and then you don't have to make it 3D if you didn't want to. So here is my finished pop-up garden box. I absolutely love it. I love that it's interactive and that whoever I give it to is going to get a lot of fun and a little surprise out of it. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and learning a little bit about how you can use the Spellbinders Large Die of the Month Kit for March. If you are not familiar with the kit, everything is linked in the description and I will see you again very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.